Vulture funds? That sounds, that sounds interesting. It sounds a little sinister too. <laughs> yeah. I know nothing about that. Vulture funds? When you hear the word vulture funds, what do you think? Uh, vulture funds? I don't, I don't, I don't follow. Vulture funds are funds that buy the debts of impoverished countries gotcha. on the cheap. And then they sue them for, you know, exorbitant amounts like court fees plus interest plus the original amount of debt plus you know all these different fees. I think a good example of um, this issue of vulture funds is a case um, that Donegal Corporation brought against the government of Zambia whereby they had bought the debt at a very very low cost four million dollars and then attempted to sue the government of Zambia in the British courts for um, over 55 million dollars. But in the end, unfortunately, the British courts found that um, Donegal certainly had a case, and even though the contract had been uh, procured from the government of, of Zambia through all sorts of coercive means, Zambia was still ordered to pay 15 million dollars to the Donegal Corporation. We're really trying to make sure that these countries have an opportunity to properly represent themselves um, and to make sure that uh, this profiteering um, does not go on unfettered. One of the ways we're doing that is through a bill that's in Congress called the Stop Vulture Funds Act that actually makes it illegal for vulture funds to use the United States court system to collect usurious profits. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is we're starting to work to approach private banks to urge them, to get them to commit to not sell their debt holdings of impoverished countries to the vulture funds. So these are two ways that we're approaching this issue um, of vulture funds. USA's social initiative in this seventh year has been the cancel debt fast, which officially concludes today. The cancel debt fast has been a rolling fast for debt justice led by Reverend David Duncan, who today marks his 46th day of a water only fast. In 2000, I saw a statistic which deeply affected me, and that was that 19,000 children in sub-Saharan Africa die every day of starvation. Not, not even AIDS. Starvation and starvation-related diseases. And I just couldn't stand uh, uh, not doing something. The purpose of the fast is really to allow someone who is in the state of starvation uh, to confront a congressperson or their staff uh, as a living person and not as simply a statistic. God calls us to fast as part of our prayer life, uh, to remember that we live not by bread alone, but by the Word of God. And that the Word of God calls us to jubilee, it calls us to a time of restoring right relationships between people and, and between nations. I'm here, first of all, because as a rabbi, um, a central command of our tradition is to eliminate debt. And every seven years, we're supposed to eliminate debt. In fact, not only the debt of big banks to third world countries, but everyone's debt. The entire debt structure is supposed to be up, um, transcended every seven years. And we know that every child educated one more year, every dollar spent on health care, radically changes the prospects for the communities in which we work and for the countries of which they are a part. Our legislative goal, as the bishop enunciated, is simple. It is, of course, to thank the members of Congress who are here, to thank the sponsors of this legislation, to thank the people who will, we hope, 
be strengthened by our work in these next couple of days and their ongoing effort to um, mark up and move these bills swiftly through both houses of Congress to provide that additional uh, cancellation of debt in 67 of the poorest countries with no damaging economic conditions. We're very pleased to announce that when the Senate convenes this morning at 10 a.m., Senators Casey, Lugar, and Dodd, joined by Senators Biden, Obama, and Sununu, will be introducing the Senate counterpart version of the Jubilee Act. The Jubilee Act itself is a very good piece uh, that uh, looks at a number of issues. Firstly, it seeks to pursue responsible lending that credit, uh, uh, creditor nations like the United States should be able to lend in a way that uh, is not going to give harmful economic conditions to poor countries, that countries like the USA should lend to to governments which are democratic and governments which have got a proper governance record. Uh, but we also see that within this particular legislation there's need for accountability and transparency for recipient governments. I think we are, we are not just calling for debt, debt cancellation for the sake of it. We, we in the South indeed are campaigning a lot and we've seen a lot of progress for uh, public finance management reforms. And indeed, we've even uh, called for ring fencing of these finances released to go to our specific sectors. And if you, uh, you realize now, we are talking about progress on people getting health services, people getting uh, HIV-related drugs, people getting many students going to school. So indeed, there is a great impact with the debt relief that countries have received. And I think we should not give up. We should continue calling for more debt relief, no more debt cancellation. And uh, meanwhile, we will continue calling for more reforms that ensure that indeed there is ownership and there is participation of the general public on how economic governance is carried out. It's a global responsibility that we join hands together. We should try to have at Jack poverty by 2015, which is a Millennium Challenge goal. Citizens in the wealthiest countries, the biggest countries, putting pressure on their own governments to get the debts canceled. That's, that's the way we've achieved the successes so far, and that's the way we think we're going to achieve further successes and get more debt cancellation for more countries. <laughs> We have unfortunately miles to go because, uh, as you know better than anyone, uh, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank have, have stalled and dawdled and pushed the target moments forward every time they've been able to, so that the suffering is going on. I looked at the figures the other day. I realized Jubilee doesn't take care of the debt of all of the developing countries, but it's now up to 2.8 trillion dollars, right? Which is, in fact, it's 250 billion more than last year. So people who think that this crisis is finished are absolutely wrong. Injury to one child is an injury to all of us. If that be the case, then pressure your political leaders and say, what are you doing in other countries? What you are doing to them, is that what you would want for your children in America? If that is not true, that is what you would not desire for an American child why do you think others desire it for their children? That is your responsibility.